as the agency of the future. So we're doing a lot of stuff that uh, literally no one else in Pakistan is doing. So I think one of the the strongest pieces of the, the marketing background that I have is driving innovation. So we're really focusing on innovation, not only in traditional media, but also in the digital space. And we're really uh, trying to introduce services that, are, that actually don't exist in Pakistan. So in that, there is a data management platform introduction. In that, with, for example, the only agency that has a, uh, a local seat on Google's DBM platform. Um, this allows us a great deal more flexibility um, and hopefully cost efficiencies are relative to anyone else. So um, from our client's perspective, it allows us to have a great deal more control in where we're actually placing ads. Um, it also allows us cost efficiencies that you can't get otherwise because we're actually buying locally through our own exchange or through our own seat on the exchange. Uh, from a publisher standpoint, it means that their inventory is pretty much sold. Um, it's, it is a win-win. There are some dangers to programmatic buying, as you know. There is the inadvertent um, placement of ads in inappropriate places. So we actually spend a great deal of time and energy in whitelisting uh, publishers that we can actually place ads with. Um, globally, digital is now um, the same size or bigger than traditional. Uh, it's inevitable that that will happen in Pakistan as well because we are part of the, the global multiverse that is, you know, that we live in today. Um, the only question is when. So right now, it's digital is probably approaching 18 to 20 percent of traditional TV spend. Uh, but it's growing at an exponential rate. So, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50% growth year on year. Um, the challenge is that we don't really have metrics to measure the growth of addicts and digital. We do have some metrics on TV, so we get fairly robust numbers from there, but uh, digital numbers are all estimates. Um, Google can give you their numbers. Facebook can give you their numbers. Uh, but then everyone else is still out there doing their own thing. So it becomes a very um, qualitative assessment of where the market is. So, you know, conservatively 15, 18, 20 percent, uh, but growing at 30, 40 percent. And your traditional media is definitely not growing at that rate. So there will come a time when the two lines will overlap. I, I would hesitate to predict exactly when, but I would say somewhere in the next three to five years. Well, uh, we, we don't see YouTube as a digital channel anymore. We just see it as another screen. So we are doing uh, something called vi video neutral planning, where basically uh, it doesn't really matter when the content is being consumed. The how of it is either, you know, traditional TV sets or your laptop or your phone, um, as the case may be. So it's a, it's a radical shift in the way people are consuming content. Most of the traditional media channels have picked up on this very, very quickly. And most of them have placed their inventory on YouTube because it's all incremental views for them. Um, but yes, obviously it is a matter of convenience because not every viewer can afford to sit down in front of the TV for an hour from eight o'clock to nine o'clock or from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock. Um, we are, as consumers, we're demanding flexibility in all aspects of our lives and we are willing and able to pay for that flexibility. Um, it all boils down to the value that we think we're getting. So YouTube is currently free, but there's really no such thing as free. Anytime a product is being offered to you free, that means that you are actually the product. So YouTube is very happy to collect your data and you know make their targeting even more specific than it is today. Um, anyone who ignores this screen does so at their own peril. Uh, we're seeing numbers as high as 80% of accessing the internet on mobile phones. Um, when you talk to Generation Z, people born after the year 2000, uh, they don't understand when you say laptop. Uh, so the internet is coming through the mobile. And this, I mean, any advertiser who doesn't understand that and doesn't prepare content for that format um, is, is doomed. Well, every time Mark Zuckerberg 
um, utters a statement about anything, it might be the weather, it impacts the way that you know we do business. Facebook is the number one platform in Pakistan. It has the highest number of uh, people registered on on one platform. It's also growing very fast. It's also you know the uh, a source of information and entertainment for um, for 40 million plus Pakistanis. Uh, so every time Facebook changes the algorithm or plays a game with you know the newsfeed or how advertising appears in the newsfeed. We actually have to then go back to all of our clients and brief them on what, what just happened. So we're very fortunate in that we are, you know, affiliated with the publicist group uh, that regularly issues um, notice uh, of change X, change Y, change Z. Um, every week we get a notification that says, hey, these are all the changes that were announced last week and this is what it means for you. Look, it, it comes back to the quality of the content that advertisers are putting out. That's one of the reasons we have our own content division and we actually spend a lot of time and energy uh, working on the content that we're putting out on behalf of our clients. If the content is crap, no one will share it. It doesn't matter whose newsfeed it shows up in. If the content is wow, people will share it, people will talk about it, um, regardless of the algorithm. YouTube is now the second largest search engine in Pakistan. Uh, the power of YouTube continues to grow and that's reflected in the pricing of their publisher, their, their YouTube masheds. Um, they doubled the price in one year. And, um, sorry, not in one year, in one day. And uh, they were expecting some pushback from the industry and from clients and uh, the opposite happened. They sold out their full year's inventory in one week. So agencies like us actually bought 25, 30% of their total inventory for the year. And our clients are now like, wait, what? Um, so yeah, it used to be $6,000, now it's $12,000. And this is a reflection of the maturity of the market. That people understand that I'm getting 30 million unique views a day from one YouTube master. If I'm going to do something national, I have to be present there. If I want to do other things, yes, I can go to other, um, you know, smaller publishers. YouTube has, in fact, introduced a, uh, a local publisher masthead as well. So there's a lot of interesting things that are happening. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to go from Facebook. I do think that Facebook will continue to grow for now because um, if I, you know, when I'm talking to pretty much across different strata in Pakistan, whether you were talking to A, B, C, D or E, um, people are either on Facebook or they're getting on Facebook and they want to get on Facebook simply because you know oh the Falani celebrity we have on page or I can go on this page and I can see this and so on yeah. um, the other you know there are, you, you're aware of the other platforms they're, they're all relatively small at this point they're all relatively niche you know the, the Instagrams and the LinkedIn's and, um, and Snapchat is negligible at this point but all of these are growing fast. So I don't know where they're going to net out because on a population of 207 million, um, even 40 million is nothing. Okay. So for example, in a country, I think in one of the, the uh, Nordic countries, Sweden or Finland, they have a total population of 4 million and they have 3.7 million people on LinkedIn. So, you know, it's like, okay, so if you're not on LinkedIn, there's something wrong with you. Either that or you're in preschool because everyone else is on LinkedIn. So it, it really is a reflection of who we are as a society. So we are a Facebook society right now. No, there's no shift. Um, in fact, most of the, the, the print publications have done a good job of going online themselves. So they're picking up more than their fair share of digital spending online. Um, so. I really don't understand this continuous uh, you know, Print is doing very well. There are new publications being launched every month in Pakistan uh, at a rate which is unprecedented by the way. Jitne jitne new publications Pakistan mein launch in the saal mein, shayad pure Middle East mein nahi launch hoenge. Middle East mein toh retraction chal rahi hai. There are actually titles closing down, but here you've got titles that are expanding and growing and you know becoming even more glamorous and more whatever. So um, it's, it's an interesting dynamic. Uh, I don't see a shift at the expense of anything. I think the overall ADEX is increasing. 
Now we are under advertised as a nation. If you look at the amount of money being spent on advertising to 200 million Pakistanis, if you try and compare that to let's say 320 million Americans, we're not, we're not indexed at a fair level. We're indexed at probably 5% of that spend. So there's a long way to go in terms of advertising spend in Pakistan. So how much of the, of the pie do you think digital will take up in the next coming three to five years? 30%, 35%? Isn't that still low? Not really, because that, that would say that traditional is another 30, 35%. And then print and outdoor and others is another 25, 30%. So that means that, that it's actually achieved parity with traditional. There's a, we, we as agencies need to be more accountable as well. We need to be accountable to our clients. We cannot simply implement things that the client wants us to implement without offering good advice. If we have a point of view, it's our duty to share that point of view.